In this video, I'll make an overview of the sample example project that I have on GitHub um, for the pause menu. And this time I extended it to also have an example of a tab menu that works for controller and it also works uh, for mouse and keyboard input. Um, so it just uses a tab list uh, that's linked to a widget switcher. So this type of game menu is very useful for, let's say, having uh, a journal or just a, a game menu for inventory, map, weapons. This is a very bare bone project just to go over uh, mostly just the functionality of having tabs that switch widgets. To find the sample project, you can navigate to this URL and I'll provide it also in, in the video's description. So it also contains a pause menu. And if you want to watch that video, I will also provide that link um, video just for a simple pause menu with a gamepad and keyboard functionality integrated. Um, so yeah, so go ahead and navigate to this URL and then just click on code and then download the zip and then you can extract on your PC and just open the U project. So this is a 5.2 project, uh, but it shouldn't be too bad to open it on 5.3. If you've seen the first video and have the first video's project files, I've made some improvements. So on begin play on the player controller, uh, I just make sure to set the input mode to game only. I was having some issues with the cursor and the inputs not being registered right away. Uh, so that helped out a lot. Um, and the other difference I made is that the default spawn pawn uh, is the spectator pawn, just so I have a nice way of showing that the input is on the, the game. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to show that and okay, so I'll just play in the selected viewport. Uh, so I am a spectator pawn and I could fly everywhere. And then uh, when I press start, and I go back, um, the input is all right. And then same thing for uh, keyboard and mouse. There you go. And the mouse still shows up. So I added an input for the player controller. Uh, so when you press the special left, J or tab, you will uh, have the game menu be activated or pushed to the layer stack. Okay, so the game menu is at the heart of everything. So I'm just going to click to browse and I put it under content UI game menu. And then let's go ahead and open that up. Okay, so the game menu uh, is pretty similar to the game settings in Lyra. Just in the fact that it has a top settings tab, has a bottom action bar for the back key or back input. And so pretty much this section here, I drew from Lyra and even the top setting tabs I did. So this is the important bit of this video. Uh, there's the top settings tabs and I, you can see at the debug section. So this is previewing three tabs and you see there's like two extra things. So those are the um, action widgets that will show the RB and the LB whenever it's a gamepad. Um, so where that is set up, um, so so what populates um, those two is essentially the uh, generic left shoulder and right shoulder. So this is where you could set, uh, if you wanted it to be something different, let's say uh, D-pad right or left, uh, you would probably choose that here. So I'm guessing generic. I'm not sure if there's a D-pad one. So in that case, you would probably need to uh, create a new input data table. Uh, so not the best example to give. Yeah, so, so this is where it essentially uh, gets that information. And it eventually leads to, oh, this is the RB icon and the LB icon. Okay, and this is the widget switcher. So this is the screen that switches depending on what tab is active. And it already has, or I put in these three widgets that it will switch between so that they already exist and I could bind them correctly. Um, so first of all, let's just go to the top setting tabs. 
Okay, so I will just click on it and then click on horizontal tab list. Okay, so this is a common tab list widget base. And what it looks like in the designer is this. So it doesn't look like much. Um, pretty much all of these are taken directly from Lyra. Um, so I'm guessing uh, if you wanted it to be vertical, it could just be a vertical box. So let's say you have a, a vertical journal that you want to tab through. Um, and then the, the tab buttons will be populated inside of this horizontal box. So if you go to the graph, so what happens is that uh, whenever it pre-constructs, it just gets the input actions that we set inside the game menu and it sets the input action to that. And then it binds some events on tab selected. Um, and it also an interesting bit that I saw is that it creates the tabs for the design review. And that is based on is design time, which I've actually never used before. So that's, that was a good learning. Um, and then it updates the tab styles. Um, and then depending on how many tabs you have, it will show or it would hide uh, the wrapper. So this is all taken directly from Lyra. So whenever a tab is created, it calls this function update tab styles. And that adds a tab button to the box. Um, so the box that we saw earlier, and it sets a certain padding. It will use a button widget that's provided. Okay, and it sets a certain style that you give it. So the common tab list widget, it takes care of all the navigation and updating the buttons whenever you swap from controller to keyboard. Uh, pretty much all you have to do is uh, define um, the tab button box and what what button style it is, what widget it is, uh, and it just it just adds as many tabs as you need and sets these actions uh, whenever you're using the controller. So let's go back to the widget game menu just to see how this and that is linked and how does uh, the first tab relate to inventory, second to weapons, and third to maps. So to see that, let's go ahead and go to the graph. And so what happens is whenever this widget is activated, so whenever you press the select key or the J or tab key, it links up the switcher to the common tab list widget. So in our case, the top setting tabs is this here, and then the widget switcher is right here. Okay, so it links those two together and then that takes care of uh, whenever you, you tab or you change your tab, um, what happens. Uh, but then we still need to actually register the tabs that we want. So I created this nice uh, function that just takes in um, the, uh, the tab list uh, the content, so what's going to be shown whenever that tab is switched to, uh, the tab index, the name ID, which is used uh, in the code to know which tab or which widget to show. And then the display text is just what's going to show up on uh, the actual tabs whenever we play. So I'm just going to double click on that just to see what that does. Um, so it just registers the tab. And I found that that didn't update the text through the label or anything from the tab. Lyra has a really nice uh, functionality for creating a label and also includes icons, icon brush. So I, I recommend you check that out. Uh, but in this case, I just make sure that um, after registering that tab, I get that tab button and I just update the button text to be uh, the display text, which is uh, the one that we pass in last. Um, so in our in our game menu, so that's the inventory, weapons, and maps. And that's pretty much all you need to link up the switcher to the tabs. And then the last bit I wanted to talk about is 
just the buttons themselves and how their style updates uh, with if they're selected or if they're active. So for that bit, whenever we register the tab with the text, we could technically have a different button widget uh, for each tab if we wanted to. Uh, but I decided to just keep it nice and simple in the same style. Um, so whenever that tab is registered, it creates this button widget type, um, which in time actually calls, uh, it actually calls uh, event handle tab creation. And that's the tab button that is spawned and added to this horizontal box. Okay, so back to the button tab or the game menu. So the button tab is located inside uh, content UI foundation buttons. Okay. And its graph just has uh, actions for when it's selected, when it's deselected, hovered or unhovered. Um, so, and I even have a, <laughs> a stray node here for playing a sound. That's what Lyra had. I, in my case, I didn't have any sounds, uh, but it's there in case you want to play a sound when it's hovered. Um, so uh, here's our, our update button text. So this just updates the text on the button. And then what mostly happens, it's all widget animations. So Lara used some nice uh, material parameter animations. In my case, I just essentially set the opacity of um, the image. So if we go to the hovered animation, so to find that, go to the Design Grid tab and then navigate to Animations. And I'm just going to go ahead and dock that in the layout. Okay, so I'll center this. So the hovered animation, it's nothing very pretty. You just play it and it just fades in. So just that nice blue border. And for selected, it's I just set it to be green. So it's just the brush material. So I do I I do animate some material parameter. So it's just that brush um RGBA2. Um so I just made sure that it goes from blue to green. So that we know that this mostly matters just for mouse and keyboard because you'll have a activated tab and you can still hover over other tabs. Um for the gamepad it doesn't really matter because you'll only have whatever is active as you tab through it. Um, and then I just I just animated the uh, the alpha value of it. Yeah, so uh, for your animations, you could put anything. You could animate, have a nice uh, glow. Uh, you could have uh, a border. Lara mostly does deals uh, deals with the border and the text shadow. And they're all material parameters. It's very good practices. So that corresponds with uh, the green whenever it's selected. And whenever I hover on, it has this nice blue border. When I click it, it lerps to green. And then on the controller, it doesn't it doesn't ever show the blue one because you're always active or the tab is always active. So yeah, I hope you have fun uh, going through this sample project and I try to keep it as simple as possible. It's just an example that also helped me understand just how tab lists work with common UI in Unreal Engine. There's not too much information about tab menus. Uh, I gotta, I, I want to give credit to the website from Matt's Game Dev Notebook and I will, I will share that link. Uh, that was very useful for me to know uh, how to link the animated switcher to the tab list uh, because Lara's logic is, is different. And I have another video that kind of covers how to extend the game settings and goes over that unique behavior. So what Lyra does is whenever the tab switches, it just filters out some parts of, of the settings widget um, instead of actually switching the widget itself. Uh, but I'm finding it really useful to just be able to straight up uh, set what the widget is. 
And in my case, the widgets, they're really simple. Uh, it's just a, it's just a user widget and it just has like a, a background that's maybe 50% alpha. So you, you could technically have a map here. You could have some controller scheme on another one. Um, you could have as many tabs as you want. You'll probably run out of text space. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really nice that common UI uh, even supports or has that functionality to support different input types very seamlessly. And the back handler functionality and all is, is really good. So yeah, as always, thank you for watching and see you in the next one.